This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on the 1910 London to Manchester Air Race. It is recorded by user S underscore Whistler, and the material was recorded on the 9th of March 2012. 1910 London to Manchester Air Race, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. 1910 London to Manchester Air Race the 1910 London to Manchester air race took place between two aviators, who each attempted to win a heavier-than-air powered flight challenge between London and Manchester, first proposed by the Daily Mail newspaper in 1906. The £10,000 prize was won in April 1910 by Frenchman Louis Paulhan. The first person to make the attempt was Claude Graham White, an Englishman from Hampshire, he took off from London on the 23rd of April 1910 and made his first planned stop at Rugby. His biplane later suffered engine problems and he was forced to land again near Litchfield. High winds meant that continuing his journey was impossible, and he gave up his attempt. His aeroplane suffered further damage while grounded when winds blew over it. While Graham White's aeroplane was being repaired in London, late on 27th of April, Paul Han began his attempt heading for Litchfield. A few hours later, Graham White was made aware of Paulhan's takeoff and immediately set off in pursuit. The next morning, after making an unprecedented nighttime takeoff, he almost caught up with Paulhan, but his aeroplane was overweight and he was forced to concede defeat. Paulhan reached Manchester early on 28th of April, winning the challenge. Both aviators celebrated his victory during a special luncheon held at the Savoy Hotel in London. The event marked the first long-distance aeroplane race in England, the first flight of a heavier-than-air machine at night, and the first powered flight into Manchester from outside the city. Paul Han later repeated the journey in April 1950, the 40th anniversary of the original flight, this time as a passenger aboard a British jet fighter. Contents 1. History 2. Legacy History on the 17th of November 1906, the Daily Mail newspaper offered a £10,000 prize for the first aviator to fly the 185 miles 298 kilometers, between London and Manchester, with no more than two stops, in under 24 hours. The challenge also specified that takeoff and landing were to be at locations no more than five miles away from the newspaper's offices in those cities. Powered flight was a relatively new invention, and the newspaper's proprietors were keen to stimulate the industry's growth. In 1908, they offered £1,000 for the first flight across the English Channel, one on the 25th of July 1909 by the French aviator Louis Belrio, and £1,000 for the first circular one-mile flight made by a British aviator in a British aeroplane one on the 30th of October 1909 by the English aviator John Moore Brasbazon. In 1910, two men attempted the newspaper's 1906 challenge, an Englishman, Claude Graham White, and a Frenchman, Louis Paulhan. Claude Graham White was born in 1879 in Hampshire, England. He was educated at Crondall House School in Farnham and later Bedford Grammar School. Apprentice to a local engineering firm, he worked for his uncle, Francis Wiley, first Baron Barnby. He started his own motor vehicle business in Bradford, before travelling to South Africa to hunt big game. In 1909, inspired by Belrior's historic cross-channel flight, he went to France and learned how to fly, and by the following January, he had become one of the first Englishmen to obtain an aviator's certificate. He also started a flying school at Pau. Isidore Auguste Marie Louis Paulhan, better known as Louis Paulhan, was no stranger to British audiences. He competed in an early flight meeting in October 1909 at Blackpool, and soon after flew in an exhibition at the Brooklands Motor Racing Circuit. He was born in 1883 in Pezinas in the south of France and later joined the military. Paulhan also worked at the Voisin factory in Paris, where he won a design competition receiving a farm and biplane as a prize. In 1906, he taught himself to fly and became one of the first men to receive a French pilot's license. 
Paulhan took part in many air shows, including several in the United States of America and in Douai, where in July 1909 he set new records for altitude and flight duration. Graham White's First Attempt Graham White was the first attempt at the journey. He planned to take off at 5 a.m. on the 23rd of April 1910 near the Plumes Hotel in the London suburb of Park Royal. A crowd of journalists and interested spectators had assembled there from about 4 a.m., with more arriving by car until about two to three hundred were present. The Times described the sky as clear and starlit, and the weather as very cold as there was a slight frost. Graham White arrived at about 4.30 a.m. and began to prepare his Farman III biplane. The aeroplane was brought into the field from the yard it had been stored in, and its seven-cylinder, fifty-horsepower rotary engine was started. Once the engine had warmed up, Graham White took his seat. Several people wished him well, including his sister and mother, and Henry Farnham. The pilot guided the biplane for about thirty to sixty yards across the frosted grass, and took off at about 5.12 a.m., before altering his direction to head for the start of the course, a gasometer at Wormworth Scrubs, within the required five-mile radius of the Daily Mail office in London. Cheered loudly by thousands of spectators who had anticipated his arrival, Graham White flew across the starting point and turned northwest towards Wembley. The secretary of the Royal Aero Club, Harold Perrin, was stood on top of the gasometer and waved a flag to indicate the start of the challenge. By 5.35 a.m., Graham White was over Watford, and at 6.15 a.m. he flew over Leighton Buzzard. He was greeted by crowds of cheering spectators as he flew above the line of the London and North Western Railway at an altitude of about 400 feet, 120 meters. Meanwhile, Perrin and two mechanics from known Erone had boarded one of the two cars and were headed for rugby. Along the way, one car took a shortcut across a field and crashed into a ridge. One occupant was seriously injured. Graham White made his first stop in rugby, just after 7.15 a.m. One of the cars that left London had arrived about ten minutes before he landed, and his mechanics attended to his airplane. News of his takeoff in London had reached the area, and a large crowd had gathered. They were kept from the aeroplane by a group of boy scouts. Graham White was taken to nearby Gellings Farm, where he drank coffee and ate biscuits, and told those present about his journey. It was wretchedly cold all the way, and I was cold at the start, but my eyes suffered towards the end, and my fingers were quite numbed. Graham White's average speed was estimated to be more than 40 miles per hour, 64 kilometers an hour. Some of the vehicles which had followed him from London did not arrive until some time after his descent. He took off at about 8.25 a.m., but was unable to reach the next scheduled stop at Crewe. About 30 miles outside Rugby, a problem with the engine inlet valves forced him to land at Haydermore, four miles outside Litchfield, about 115 miles into the 185-mile journey. On landing, he damaged a skid, and his mechanics were telegraphed for. While the necessary repairs were being made, Graham White ate lunch and then slept for a few hours, looked after by his mother, who had arrived by car. Meanwhile, a large crowd of interested spectators had gathered, and the farmer who owned the field charged them for admission. Soldiers from a nearby barracks kept the public from getting too close to the biplane. As the sun fell, the wind grew in strength, and at 7 p.m., Graham White conceded that the high winds made further progress impossible. He decided to try again at 3 a.m., hoping to reach Manchester by the 5.15 a.m. deadline, but at 3.30 a.m., he abandoned the attempt, and said he would travel to Manchester and try again from there. He ordered the soldiers to peg the aeroplane down, but his instructions were ignored. The next night it was blown over by strong winds and severely damaged. Paulhan's Attempt Graham White's biplane was returned to London and on the 25th of April was being repaired at Wormwood Scrubs in the Daily Mail's hangar. Paul Hund arrived at Dover from California, where he had been performing exhibition flights. Another competitor, Emil de Bonnet, had formally entered the contest and was due to fly a few days later. On the 27th of April, 1910, Paul Hund's biplane, 
a newer model than graham white's was brought to hendon on the site of what is now the london branch of the royal air force museum it was assembled in less than eleven hours and at five twenty one p m that day paul had took off for hampstead cemetery his official starting line he arrived there ten minutes later flew on to harrow and begun to follow the route of the london and northwestern railway the railway company had prepared for the event by whitewashing the sleepers of the correct line for the competitors to follow paulhan was followed by a special train on board which were paulhan and henry farman other members of his party followed by car graham white had attempted to make a test flight earlier that day but the huge crowds had hampered his effort and he was unable to take off having spent two days supervising the reconstruction of his airplane he retired to a nearby hotel at about six ten p m he was awakened with the news that paulhan had begun flying his attempt and he decided to set off in pursuit this time he had no trouble in clearing a space in the crowd his biplane's engine was started and by six twenty nine p m he had passed the starting line almost an hour later he flew over leighton buzzard just as paulhan was passing over rugby as night approached graham white landed his aeroplane in a field near the railway line at road in northamptonshire fifteen minutes later paul had reached lichfield where about a hundred and seventeen miles a hundred and eighty eight kilometres into his journey he ran out of fuel he managed to land the biplane in a field near trent valley railway station the aeroplane was pegged down and paul had left with his colleagues to stay overnight at a nearby hotel Graham White, meanwhile, stayed at the house of a Dr. Ryan. Both aviators intended to restart at 3 a.m. the following day. Still about 60 miles, 97 kilometers, behind the Frenchman, Graham White made a historic decision. He would make an unprecedented night flight. Guided by the headlamps of his party's cars, he took off at 2.50 a.m. Within minutes of becoming airborne, however, he almost crashed, leaning forward to make himself comfortable his jacket brushed with the engine ignition switch, and he accidentally turned the engine off, but he quickly realized his error and was able to continue. Using the lights of the railway stations to guide his course through the pitch-black night, within forty minutes he had reached Rugby, and at 3.50 a.m. he passed Nuneaton. Despite making good progress, Graham White was carrying a large load of fuel and oil, and his engine was not powerful enough to raise the aeroplane over the high grounds before him. Disappointed, he landed at Polesworth, about 107 miles, 172 kilometers, from London, and only about 10 miles behind Paulin. A few minutes later, the Frenchman, unaware of Graham White's progress, resumed his journey. He passed Stafford at 4.45 a.m., crew at 5.20 a.m., and at 5.52 a.m. he landed at Barsacroft Fields, near Didsbury, within five miles of the Manchester office of the Daily Mail, thereby winning the contest. His party was taken by train to a civic reception held by the Lord Mayor of Manchester. Graham White was notified of Paulin's excess, and reportedly shouted, Ladies and gentlemen, the £10,000 prize has been won by Louis Paulin the finest aviator that the world has ever seen. Compared with him, I am only a novice. Three cheers for Paulhan. He retired to bed, leaving his mechanics to repair his aeroplane, and later sent Paulhan a telegram, congratulating his rival on his achievement. Graham White attempted to resume his journey to Manchester and reached Chamworth, but he later abandoned the flight. Presentation Paulhan was presented with his prize, a golden casket containing a cheque for £10,000, on the 30th of April 1910, during a luncheon at the Savoy Hotel in London, presided over by the editor of the Daily Mail, Thomas Marlowe. Graham White was given a consolidation prize of an inscribed white silver bowl, filled with red and white roses. Louis Paulhan's acceptance speech I am in England for the second time and I must say, in no country that I have visited have I ever received a more cordial welcome. I believe sincerely that the victory I have won belongs of right to your brilliant and courageous compatriot, Mr. Graham White. I am proud to have had him as my rival in this battle of the air. In the name of the aviators of both France and all of the other countries, I offer my congratulations to the great English journal, The Daily Mail, which by its magnificent prizes, 
has given an inestimable stimulus to the science of aviation and has thus contributed more than any other agency to the conquest of the air legacy the events of the twenty seventh and twenty eighth of april constituted the world's first long distance air race and also marked the first nighttime takeoff of a heavier than air machine graham white's decision proved that nighttime takeoff flight and navigation were possible provided that the pilot was able to relate his position to the ground graham white did this with the help of friends one of whom shone his car's headlamps onto the wall of a public house Poland's arrival in Didsbury was notable for being the first powered flight into Manchester from any point outside the city. His achievement is commemorated by a blue plaque fixed to the wall of 25 to 27 Paulhan Road, a pair of 1930s semi-detached houses near the site of his landing. Within weeks of Poland's victory, the Daily Mail offered a new prize, £10,000 to the first aviator to cover a thousand mile, 1,609 kilometre circuit of Britain in a single day, with 11 compulsory stops at fixed intervals. The challenge was completed by M. Beaumont on the 26th of July 1911, in about 22 and a half hours. Paulhan and Graham White competed again later in 1910 for the newspaper's prize of £1,000 for the greatest aggregate cross-country flight, which Paulhan won. The flight's 25th anniversary was celebrated at the Aero Club of France in Paris on the 16th of January 1936. Present at the banquet were Paulhan and Graham White, along with the French Air Minister, Victor Denain, Prince Berthold of Sweden, Harold Perrin, and a number of other notable dignitaries. Although by then retired from flying, on 28th of April 1950, the 40th anniversary of the 1910 flight, Paulhan repeated the journey from London to Manchester, this time as a passenger on board a Gloucester Meteor T-7, the two-seater training variant of the British jet fighter. After travelling at 400 miles per hour, 644 kilometres an hour, the 67-year-old Frenchman said, C'est un magnifique. It was all I ever dreamed of in aviation. No propellers, no vibration. The Daily Mail entertained him at the Royal Aero Club in London, where he was accompanied by his former rival, Claude Graham White. 